A quote commonly associated with Sigmund Freud, be it his words or not, is time spent with cats is never wasted. This became reality to me while I was on medical leave from my job as a behavior tech. A cat, less than a foot tall, would change the course of my life in big ways with normal, everyday feline antics. Allow me to introduce you to this knucklehead, also known as Vinnie Bag of Donuts. He had a found a set of pine chairs to be useful in the same way a tree is to a chainsaw. The height and pitch of the back legs made for a perfect scratching post. That soft pine against his sharp claws, they didn't stand a chance. They were doomed. At that point, I figured the chairs were ruined, but did some research on what could be done. How to refinish furniture popped up on Google, and the supplies needed were fairly affordable. So I took my broke ass on down to Lowe's for some chemical stripper, scrapers, sandpaper, and finishing supplies, thinking I'd have everything done by supper time. But let me tell you, I was sorely mistaken, and quickly learned larger intricate chairs aren't a good starting point for a beginner whatsoever. With the contours, details, and angles, it was a victory just to have the back stripped by the weekend. But it did spark a new obsession. I was 100% determined to refinish something, even if it was a stick from outside. Given it was May, yard sale season was just getting started. My wife Krista and I spent weekend mornings browsing lawns for stuff to refinish when we came across a couple of small and simple solid wood pieces that were more in the tavern style. These would be perfect. That way if I made a mistake, which I did, they were already distressed. So no harm, no foul. The porch became my shop. I could breathe in that fresh country air and listen to my favorite tunes. It seemed like destiny, but one day Front Porch Train by Reverend Peyton's Big Damn Band came on with the lyrics, I got good on the front porch, I'm front porch train. It's almost as if the universe gave me permission to pursue a new venture. I worked diligently until I had a spare bedroom filled with refinished furniture. Two end tables, a coffee table, and a dresser, all in different styles. But they didn't match our decor at all, so we thought that we would try to sell them. But with living in the boondocks, we only had Etsy to really rely on. Shipping furniture was also very expensive. To get around this speed bump, Krista suggested I offer services to refinish easier projects. I could learn as I go and only take on projects I knew I couldn't ruin. So stuff that looked to be beyond the grave in rough shape or, or had no sentimental, sentimental value to the customer. If I couldn't save it, I wouldn't charge any money whatsoever. Not a week after the first Craigslist ad, someone reached out to us about a handrail that needed refinished. It was my first run-in with maple which turned into a bit of a learning experience on how different types of wood behave when adding color. Wood seemed to have a personality, and your techniques are dictated by those differing characteristics. With my first project complete, more people from Craigslist as well as our friends threw furniture our way. I had graduated from the porch to the basement so that we, that wet finish was less exposed to dust from the outside. But given we were renting a house larger than we needed to begin with, it was time to start looking for a new place. Krista's parents let us use their basement as well as stay with them as we developed our skills. <clears throat> we did work for neighbors as well as customers that found us on social media. Vinny always kept a watchful eye, but we did the same in reverse given his history. As you can imagine, the amount of noise, fumes, and a full house didn't mix very well. So with the help of Krista's parents, we found a small uh, house with a detached garage both built in 1900. The garage needed an entirely new wall built, and my father-in-law built a room for us to place finished pieces in. As all fixer-uppers are concerned, it's an ongoing and never-ending project to get them up to code. Finally, up went the sign and we were ready to work. One of our first projects at the new spot turned into a bit of a learning opportunity. A customer had, a refinish, or had us refinish and spot fix a few projects throughout their house. There was such a variety of different designs and furniture that we learned and utilized different skills. It also turns out they were church leaders. A few months went by and we were asked to restore a church altar for their congregation. Up until that point, I had only had experiencing in staining wood, but the altar required a toned finish. So the shop turned into a science lab as we mixed up colors to match the original finish. It was a success. Our confidence was high and we booked way more projects than manageable. Unfortunately, with the shop packed full of projects to be restored, we both caught COVID. It took a good bit to recover, and the shutdown in general jeopardized so many small businesses, including ourselves. But in taking it slow, I realized a few things. 
First, restoration is a discipline that requires you to be in the moment. Trying to do too much at one time compromises efficiency and quality. Slowing down allows you to enjoy the art rather than see it as work or a chore. Second, a business is rarely an island and will not succeed without networking with other professionals. From other entrepreneurs, we learn new ways to be more efficient. We discuss different refinishing techniques, equipment, and how to identify quality furniture. I've even developed a friendship with an individual who helped find cheaper equipment at auctions. And not only that, he always gives us curveball projects that, change, uh, that challenge our skills. I've never been a social person, but starting a business has encouraged me to be less of a shop hermit. Uh, it's given me the confidence to take healthy risks and go outside of my comfort zone. From going on a solo trip to Oregon to reconnect with a sibling I was separated from 20 years ago, to joining a local advocacy group to try to help others. If you asked me 10 years ago where we'd be today, I wouldn't believe we could restore an entire Maddox desk in the, in the color of our customer's vision. I was certain I'd be researching human behavior, though in a sense I still am. People develop strong connections to their furniture, whether it represents a loved one or their own individuality. That's why this work is so gratifying. To some, a dining table may seem mundane, but it's a place people create memories and make connections. Similar to how a set of chairs and a cat would give me nearly a decade of memories and challenges to overcome. And chances are, right now, he's at home giving me more work to do as we speak. <laughs> Thank you.